so we are now running the ASTF needles sub from Barstow, California to Needles, California. This is going to be about 150 miles. It is now 19.03 hours on a 24 hour clock. Let's release the brakes. Put the reverser in forward. <coughs> Sorry about no videos Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday. Um, on this series, but I was uh, just got caught up with life and stuff. Um, Monday and Tuesday, I forget what was going on in real life. Just went into a recording. Uh, Wednesday, I had a late night class trip with the school bus. Thursday was. I think I got home at like nine after going out and doing Uber and Lyft in real life, and I was just too tired to do it, and then Friday night was when I actually recorded it, which was yesterday, as I said, happy Saturday, I know most of you guys who are watching this are probably done with your work for the week, um, and going into the Christmas holiday break, with Christmas being Wednesday. We are running the same concepts that we did over over the past with a dash nut, with a few dash nut with I believe three yeah, three dash two dash nines in the lead a GP thirty eight dash two and a third dash nine on the BNSF um, followed by sixty uh, intermodal stack or truck on truck trailer on train type cars. This would be the tower. This is the west bound departure track. Uh, I believe I put us one or two tracks over to the left um, before. Now, as we're departing here. <coughs> the yard's probably going to look a little bit different um, from the other version because this is Bob Worth. This is for Bob Worth. Um, Bob Worf's ASTF Needles Pass Route. He was not involved in the Cahoon Pass Route at all. I think that was a different group. Yeah, I believe that was a different group involved in Cahoon Pass. Leaving here, I'm going to put the throttle at notch 4 of 8, which would be 50% throttle. Actually, the east end. Yeah, this is the east end of the Barst Barstow Yard. I'm looking at the trackage here. This looks like an older era, to be honest. Um, as we depart, um, and over on your left is the uh, Barstow Harvey House and current present day Amtrak passenger station.
Barstow is almost definitely a crew change point for the BNSF Railroad. There's a couple of empty car, empty well cars. I believe the trailers and the containers all go into the same well car. Um, I could be wrong about loading purposes. Um, I do have a friend who, uh, few, uh, I have a good friend who works on the railroad, so I'm going to ask him later. Even though I don't think he's versed at all in the loading process of these of these cars. Um, as we leave town, it's going to go up to 60 and then 65 miles an hour. I will probably just run this over speed at 74 the whole way. This is roughly 150 to 175 miles, so this will probably take between two and four hours real time to conduct. Um, I don't, like I said, this route is fairly boring, to be honest. Um, once you get out of, um, and I'm just going to keep this view while we, uh, to give you guys a full shot of the train. I usually don't do a view like that. Uh, this route, I think, and there's, and there's the EOT. There's our EOT. So, to, so on a westbound departure, I'd throw it into one of the east sidings. I don't think it'd fit here. Or over there. Once again, here's in the... I, this is probably the... No, I don't know. I want to say this is where the freight depot is. This is definitely downtown Barstow right here. And then this is west Barstow. Um, that's from the train is heading out of turf. Go up here. So as of right here, on the way, on the way in, that's a 50 zone. That drops to 50, but it's 30 for us coming out of the yard. Uh, then it's going to go up to 60. And then from there, it's going to go up to about mile marker 743-5. It's going to go up to uh, 65 zone for freight. Now, some railroads have general freight speeds, intermodal speeds, and passenger speed timetables. Others do not. It all depends. I know in talking with the uh, engine, uh, with the conductor, I know the freight uh, east of Roanoke and specifically east of Lynchburg, Virginia, the intermodals go, do go faster than the uh, than like your tank train or your manifest mixed freight train. Um, East 
Barstow board. And what looks like what would probably be considered the East Barstow interlocking. Uh, most freight railroads don't have their... I don't know a whole lot of uh, freight railroads that name their... Uh, their interlocking, so let's slow it down. I didn't think we'd make it up to 60 that quick, actually, to be honest. Um, as it's a 60, as we're gonna approach a 65, but I'm probably just gonna idle it back down because in about two miles or so, it's gonna the speed's dropping back down to 50. Um, we are now actually approaching the U.S. Marine Corp. Nebo uh, facility. Uh. Marine Corps Supply Depot at Nebo. I'll keep it at notch two just to be safe. Kill the bell one. Um, this point, this line is also run with Union Pacific Railroad. Well, I, I it says UP pass siding, so 
This could mean that there's a Union Pacific passenger depot from a bygone era at Daggert, but I could be wrong. Now, Daggert, California is also home to the um, General Aviation Airport for Block and Dagger, West Bullard. Yeah, and then the, coming up here is also going to be the Union Pacific Railway uh, to Salt Lake, it says. Um, I don't know all the subs going up towards uh, Salt Lake, but the Kaima sub, C H I M A, I believe is how it's spelt. Sub goes up to Vegas. In the old and in the old days, there used to be an Amtrak train. I think it was called the Desert Wind that used to run between Los Angeles and Las Vegas. Now that thing was slow. That train took about eight hours to travel the distance. Now earlier we did. I want to say we already did pass under a Decker East board. Is a clear. Now, if you noticed, I'm going to pull out here, it said something about the passenger siding. I mean, that's just pass, uh, passing siding. I don't know if they meant passenger or passing siding. I don't know, Whatever. And then over here on your left is going to be the Nebo, is the Gaima sub to Salt Lake Johnson Supply Company. That is, and some cool water. Passenger speed is now going to be 90. Freight speed is going to be 70. That is where we will open her up to 74. I will go to the back for a minute just to check on something. I shouldn't need to. Let's see, back into my train is just at crossed over the Daggett board. And Now clear of the UP and uh, his name. Now it's clear of the interlock. And just one last thing before I go back inside and pause. Yep. Passenger is gone. Passenger speeds are marked at 90 from here on out here most of the way. Freight speeds are marked at 70. We will run it at 74 just because that is the maximum speed on this train set by Govern. And there's the Cool Water Junction board. Like I said, this is pretty light. Not a whole lot of industry or anything. So... This would be one of those times where I would probably just kick my feet up and relax.
probably something with the governor system. Now, here's the last piece of civilization coming up. Um, I am purposely, and for the record, I am purposely keeping up these uh, siding marks. Just wanted to show you guys where we are. And two, for my own personal knowledge um, of the area. Um, but we are now going by the Barstow Daggett Airport lead track. Give a blue job at the signal. And I'm not too worried about that. Because there's the airport track. But the way that would work is we would jump in on that side and then back in to the uh, to the track. There's a way we could do it and block up both lines, right? I think dispatch would be smart about something like that.
the Albuquerque area to the Transcon where you don't have to go through uh, neat, uh, through uh, uh, Baleen.
that W back, that W board back there is a whistle board. That is where you would blow for a crossing. Um, like I said, uh, a lot of cities and more urban areas are trying to do away with that and either doing quiet zones, which I do not like, or a wayside signal or wayside horns. A wayside horn is basically a speaker that'll have a train, have like a an audio train horn. top of your standard lights and bells for your crossing. We don't have those in Roanoke, Virginia. All we have are quiet zones. Now apparently I just found this out today. Because I live about three I live a few miles from the tracks as the crow flies. Guess what? I can actually hear the train whistle from my house. I thought I couldn't. Now that would be on the Blue Ridge Main Line from Roanoke, the double track Blue Ridge Main Line from Roanoke to Lynchburg and then on to Norfolk. Amtrak is serviced by this line going from Roanoke to Lynchburg, and then up, up the Piedmont Division to Washington, D.C. Chief, I should have known better. Chicago, all the way from Chicago to LA. Let's see. 
again, we were on time. Flight from L.A. to Washington via O'Hare. Funny, I have to connect in Chicago. Both ways, both on the same on the mode of transportation. Anyway, so, okay, now, speed is going to go back up to 70 on that clear block in four-tenths of a mile. There is the, I can see the signal ahead at a clear block. We are now speeding, barely.
fault detector milepost 711.1. No defects. Repeat, no defects. Total axles 128. Detector out. With that being said, there are some default detectors that are sim simpler than that and others that are more elaborate than that. I do know on a few of the rugs that are that Bob Worth has made that he does have default detectors included in them and they are the more simpler audio variety. I haven't run half of his subdivision work in a while so I can't remember which subs have it and which ones don't immediately off the top of my head. Um, that is something that I will need to get for another day. Okay, so passenger train speeds have gone up to 79 miles an hour. Freight train speed has gone up to 65 miles an hour. And we're still having trouble making 55 miles an hour in notch 8 with four motors running.
iPhone in.
break there, folks. Tip, Baghdad, California, anybody?
certainly not four for now. The speed limit through here is going to be 65 mile an hour. Settlements are like nothing, or like nothingness settlements, by the way. So, a lot of these, yeah, a lot of these uh, settlements are like nothingness settlements. So, they're not even worth it. Uh, six, seven, eight, we are at mile marker number 674. So, it's probably about 70 to 90 miles. We are time wise, it is. We're about an hour and 13 minutes in, which include the release of the brake. Now, normal conditions we would have stopped well in advance of this right now. But also, um, the stop would have taken a lot longer because we would have had to walk the train because uh, conductor uh, uh, conductor would have had to walk the train. Assuming everything was right, that probably would have taken about an hour to an hour and a half of time based on how your average conductor is a lazy asshole. And I'm just stereotyping there. Now, if we were running at 74 instead of 65, I would have been okay with it. But we were, like I, like you saw, I, I was up to the 120s. That's why I did an e-brake application. Man, I'm now idling now just to be safe. Heck, I'm setting up my... Uh, dynamic braking.
into her actually uh, as we are clear of the east uh, the east Baghdad border. Amboy, Boar, uh, South Main, Clear Block, Amboy, 
something exciting is clear on. Both eastbound and south main west end. Now, as I was saying, yeah, most of this video series has been in San Bernardino County, California. After Victorville, there's maybe uh, east of the, uh, it's probably close to half a million people in the Victorville metropolitan area, which includes uh, Aspeniza, I always pronounce it town name wrong, Apple Valley, etc., etc. Barstow is about 25 to 30,000. The other side of the mountain, closer to us, uh, and boy, east and eastbound on the south main is clear. As I was saying, the population is spread out. I would say within a side an area about the size of Rhode Island has all but. Hundred thousand of over two to two and a half million residents in San Bernardino County. As that goes from Montclair in the west, south is like Chino and all. And even that, that's still I mean the population most of the, about 80% of the population is an area that's about the size of the state of Rhode Island. And yet the county as a whole is the size of, I want to say, at least the state of West Virginia. And to show you guys what I'm talking about, put in two notches in the throttle. Um, yeah, no, that's a major population density. Now, when we go into Arizona and the seg sub and all, a little bit of about probably the first 10 minutes of the seg sub will also be in the San Bernardino County, County, California, but most of the seg sub will be in Arizona. Um, but definitely not as many uh, counties.
I brought that up is you're going to go through five five different counties in Arizona as opposed to one count as opposed to four counties in California with considerable distance spent in one county. Uh, the four counties that we went through here in California are Los Angeles County, Orange County, to, uh, which I think we spend the least amount of time out of any county on this train. Side County and San Bernardino County. Now, like I said prior, San Bernardino is the, lar is the one we'll probably spend the longest amount of time in, <coughs> as it is also the largest county in the contiguous United States of America by size. The largest county by population is also in California and is neighboring Los Angeles County. At 10 million residents, there are probably outside of the San Francisco, uh, which is at 9 million, San Diego, and Los Angeles, there's probably only about 5 6 million people in the rest of the whole state. live outside of those three major city areas. Um, okay, so now we're getting close to uh, Caldees.
think we're about 650 or 60 miles from the uh, destination because I think it was like the 580s. Actually, somewhat of a wide track, to be honest. Which would surprise me. I saw signs for from sub. I didn't catch that from sub. Uh, yeah, it's a wide track out. Caldis, uh, Caldis Sub, the Caldis Sub, which takes you down to Parker and uh, the south side. Oh, East Caldis on the uh, Needles Main. We are in clear block at the siding ground, and another clear block. Three hundred. 
this right here is, watch my mouse cursor now, folks. For a this is your speedometer in digital, or in analog, the dot is the dial, and this is your digital speed right now. This is your amp meter right here, analog, digital, readout, and your uh, throttle. It shows you which uh, throttle notch you're in. Over here is your brake pipe. is zero and my main is 128 with an over speed warning of 74 um, and all the top four numbers I mentioned the uh, 90 90 0 and 128 those are all for pounds per square inch and then your BP your brake pressure your brake pipe I mean brake pipe Setting all your positive. 
card has a digital readout of where it is, right above your amperage gauges. And that's a little overview of the controls. That black phone is probably a communications link. Um, yeah, I know that slowed us down a bit.
way to tell when you're in town or not in town, and from what I'm noticing in this, is the closer your signals are to each other.
quite a ways north of town to get two goths before we make our way east again. Um,
looks like Essex and Fanner are right next to each other. Fenner's 
So this is actually the interstate we are at 618. So I just think we may have quite a distance to go, I think. A lot longer than we thought. It's 9.10 now. I mean, I still think we're going to be there by 10 o'clock p.m. Uh, game time.
part is though, the North uh, Fenner set out in the South Gulf are less than a mile from each other. Now we're, we are heading northeasterly right now, but we're going to switch to a due easterly heading as we leave Gulfs for uh, Homer. And then when we hit Homer,
Saturday, Sunday nights, I work at the rail yard of Roanoke for PTI, which is the uh, railroad taxis and cab service right here.
motor like once you're over a certain speed dynamic becomes ineffective
fifties.
less less steeper, less less steep than the uh, okay. than um the Kahoon Pass, but like I but in the sense of they're less treacherous.
six tracks, probably not even all the tracks to top it off. Um, like I, my plan is still to just stop the train at the Amtrak station and call it a day. And from the looks of it, I don't think this innovation goes that much farther past. I'm gonna keep the speed down, but to the low, definitely below 30. is and this is the passenger depot it's now 9.55 I'm actually surprised it took so much to three hours for this train I'm just trying to clear that that uh, grade crossing. That's all I'm actually trying to do right now. It's just to clear the grade crossing. I'm going to call it right now. From here. Level ground now, so I do need some power. It's just how much power do I need? Um, I'm gonna show up here to idiot simulated traffic. What else is new? Okay, so there's now six more cars to cross until we uh, make them safely over the tracks. Also, with that being said, I do need to also clear the passenger terminal. Three to go. Two to go.
One to the crossing. Eight. Uh, three to the main switch and clear the crossing. Probably about ten to go though. Four to the stop. Three to stop. Two to the stop. One to the stop. Give me a hell. Quarter. I should not have been done this emergency, but it got one.